Looking back on 2015, you probably remember the furor surrounding the Fifty Shades of Grey film adaptation. The unending pages both defending and criticising its approaches to everything ranging from gender roles to capitalism. Yet, amidst all this, very few critics stepped forward and acknowledged that it can be a difficult task to speak authoritatively when it comes to erotica. For as much as your approach to the average film may be scuppered by any number of subjective experiences or interpretations, erotic cinema only adds more layers of complexity. The extent to which an erotic film manages to titillate or disgust will, often despite any level of appreciable craftsmanship, be the means by which its audience will judge it, divorced from any wider debates. Uh, would a human toilet be a suitable compromise? Really? Well, I really <laughs> have to go now. Whereas the average film can reliably be sold as the detached, vicarious fantasies of another, erotic cinema has to pander to the viewer's own fantasies. As a form, it's inherently more transgressive, often playing to the more immediate and problematic impulses of the human psyche, the unexplainable and sometimes unhealthy fetishes that represent a kind of aesthetic bliss for their target audience. The formal aspects of filmmaking often have little bearing over the viewer's enjoyment of erotica, as much as the bare happenings of the content itself. Formally appreciated as either a film or a cultural object, Fifty Shades of Grey was problematic and cliched, and yet as a happening, as the aesthetic fantasy of its target audience, it seemed to strike a nerve. Enlighten me then. With this in mind, I've had some trouble trying to approach Radley Metzger's erotic classic The Image. Metzger is a heavyweight when it comes to erotic cinema, and The Image, also known as The Punishment of Anne and The Mistress and the Slave, is one of his rare forays into the niche territory of sadomasochism, bondage and submission. The result is slightly confused. If there's a definite praise to be offered towards The Image, it's that Metzger was at the peak of his career when it was released. Although the film can hardly be called softcore, there are several extended graphic scenes of oral sex for a start, it handles itself with enough restraint that it's far from exploitative, and is shot and arranged beautifully. Of course, the extent to which nice camera work will make you want to watch a BDSM-centric erotic film remains to be seen. Based on the Catherine Rob Grillet novel of the same name, L'Image, the image follows the sexual adventures of Jean, a male writer living in France who stumbles into the lives of a pair of female lovers, Claire and Anne, both of whom are involved in a sadomasochistic game of dominance and submission. With little experience or knowledge of kinkier sex, Jean becomes intrigued by the push and pull of their power imbalance, and works his way into their favour to learn more. Although initially introduced into their sexual games as little but a means of humiliating the submissive Anne, Jean soon becomes increasingly involved in the couple's games, across a series of titled vignettes that trace the development of their relationship throughout Paris. As you can probably guess, kinkiness ensues. As a filmmaker, Metzger was ambitious in his aims. The image seems to be aware of the limitations of erotic cinema, of the ways in which it caters to select individual fantasies, and so it stages Jean as an outsider, one whose constant narration attempts to rationalise and contextualise his interest in the world of sadomasochism, for an audience who might not be entirely converted to the film's select perversions. Anne listened with delight as I recounted the episode with the sales girl. She seemed happy that her complete obedience <laughs> gave such pleasure to her mistress. Claire had as much satisfaction in hearing the story as if she had been there herself. In tone and delivery, it almost feels like an attempt to grant the film a dramatic appeal of its own, divorced from the specifics of its kinkier elements. Combined with a Parisian backdrop and a frequent lingering on French architecture, Jean's narrative often leaves the viewer with a city-searching impression of a Woody Allen film, albeit with a substantially larger quotient of whips and chains. This isn't to say that it fully succeeds as a story unto itself. For a film grounded in the subtleties of sadomasochistic response, the image contains some unfortunately heavy-handed religious and high-culture symbolism. 
A scene in which Anne prays for forgiveness in front of a crucifix before choosing a whip for a punishment stands out like a sore ass when contrasted with the natural demeanour of the film's sexual play. While a line like girl, you're about to reap the fruits of your labor spoken by Jean at the climax of his first sexual encounter is cringeworthy in any context. On a larger scale still, the film is also severely dated. Like most erotic cinema from the 70s, its approach to sexual practice, though arguably well ahead of its time, doesn't carry the same weight it used to. The mere existence of a film like Fifty Shades of Grey ensures that the image will never quite recover the same sense of wonder and danger that it once possessed. Metzger's approach is interesting though, if just for the film's vivid depiction of Paris and its layered approach to the relationship between its three main characters. Although it's undoubtedly problematic, the film clearly delineates between vanilla sex and BDSM, staging the former as the indicator of a loving relationship and the latter as a hedonistic thrill, driven by a fear of intimacy. Within these thematic constraints, it provides a clear narrative arc for each character. Anne is repulsed by overt romance and disgusted by Jean's motioning towards a traditional relationship, to the point at which she eventually flees for fear of its influence. Claire and Jean, however, gradually drift towards each other, closing the film with a vanilla sex scene, one that represents a newfound intimacy against the cold and alien backdrop of BDSM. By staging Claire and Jean's growing relationship through their sexual play, the image cleverly entwines its dramatic arc within the sexual display itself providing a cohesive narrative rare for erotica. This is arguably the greatest display of Metzger's talents, and yet for many, this arc is also likely to be the film's biggest downfall. Although I've talked about the inherent trouble in criticising an erotic film, Jean's closing encounter with Claire provides the most valid complaint that can be offered against the image. If, for the vast majority of its run, Metzger's film revels in a sadomasochistic world of fantasy, then it corrupts this world in its closing moments, retreating into the safe, cinematic reality of a straight couple having vanilla sex, framed by jubilant music, as if completely unappreciative of the transgressive lens through which the film has been enjoyed. While the camera's gaze fetishises and glamorises the world of S&M, the core narrative retreats away from its extremities, left to the whims of Jean, a man who has clearly set his sights on a staid romantic affair. It's a sad ending, in the guise of something uplifting, and one that leaves a sour final note. Appreciated as a cinematic experiment, the image is a great film, one that raises a firm middle finger to genre convention, both then and now. Funnily enough, the most glaring criticism of Metzger's film is the one that's usually the most difficult to make, that it's flawed as an erotic film. The image betrays its own audience in its closing scenes, ending not with a decadent flourish but with an unsatisfying vanilla whimper. The fantasy of the film crumbles into something unwelcome, if not boring, and when speaking authoritatively about erotica, that's perhaps the worst criticism anyone could offer. The situation, in short, had not been what I thought it was. I felt annoyed and deceived. I decided not to think about those two girls anymore, or about the whole absurd story.